Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> well, <clears throat> welcome to First Church, where we glorify God by connecting people to Jesus Christ through spiritual nourishment and dynamic outreach. <clears throat> Excuse me, swallowed a bug. Uh, good to see everybody today. And I want you to know that our vision here is that this is a place where lives can be changed, where hurts are healed, hope is restored, and loneliness is relieved, and where everybody should feel needed and wanted. And we hope you feel that and it can experience that. That's our goal, and we're working toward that. And that's, that takes some effort. And, uh, but I'm glad that we can do that together. Today is a special day, a Sunday. It's, it's Transfiguration Sunday. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of in the middle. You know, we have Advent and then Epiphany season. And now we have Tran uh, Transfiguration Sunday because Wednesday starts Lent. And I'll have more to say about that in a little bit. But let's prepare our hearts now and let's worship the Lord together.
Please stand with me as we read our responsive reading, and then your hymn is in our Faith We Sing hymnal, and then on to the prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lord, you have called us from the mountaintop. Help, Help us look forward to where you could have gone. Help, Help us listen to the words of your healing love. Open our hearts and spirits to receive your directions. Place your trust in the Lord in all your ways. But through the love of Christ, we can expect the best. Place your hope and trust in Christ, for he is your guide. Lord, we come here to give our lives to you. Amen. with purity, power, and truth. Your mercy reflects your compassion, your care, and your love. Transform us into your image as we seek to follow you. Use us to make your presence known throughout the world. In your strong name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Well, once again, we welcome you to First Church, and uh, our ushers are getting ready to bring the attendance pads down, and as they do, uh, thank you for the information you provide us there. It's really, really helpful to know who's here and who's not, so uh, thank you for taking care of that. While that's being done, get out your bulletin, a couple of announcements that I wanted just to highlight uh, for you. Uh, you know, this afternoon is, uh, it's not listed in the bulletin, but this afternoon is the first of our uh, confirmation classes. And uh, I want you to pray for the confirmation class. We have about 12 students in our confirmation class. So it's a big class this year, and it's an exciting time. I want to remind you, following our service here, there will be an artist reception right out in Gallery Hall. Take time to before you rush off to check that out and uh, be a part of There's some great artwork out there. And we want to thank our artists for the, the work that they do. One other, uh, uh, just a quick reminder, those of you that are in the Brown Bag Bible study on Mondays uh, or you would like to come tomorrow and tomorrow only, we're going to meet at a different time at 1 o'clock, at 1 o'clock. So make note of that. I just wanted to mention that. Tomorrow night also, United Methodist Men will meet uh, for their monthly meeting. They have a great program planned, the Reverend Randy Coy, who is Executive Director of the uh, Kentucky Homes for Children and Youth. Uh, will be uh, the speaker, and he, as always, he'll have a great, great program, and we look forward to seeing, uh, being with him. Also, check out all the announcements that are in your bulletin. Lots of fantastic uh, events upcoming here, as you can see there. Uh, Anna's Friends, Cinderella's Closet, Mountain Mission Truck. We have a senior health fair later this month, and I want you to be a part of that. And also, the United Methodist Men's uh, Pancake Breakfast is coming up on March the 23rd, so get your tickets now for that. Tell me again. Oh, thank you. Woo. Yeah. This, uh, this uh, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and uh, we're going to do two things. One, uh, a lot of you may not even realize this, but on Wednesdays at noon, we have a communion service here, usually meets in the chapel. And uh, this Wednesday, as we do that communion service, we'll also have the imposition of ashes as we begin the season of Lent together. I know some of you don't like to drive at night, and this will give you a good opportunity to come and receive ashes. Uh, we will also, have, on Wednesday evening at 6.30, have uh, our traditional Ash Wednesday service. So I want to invite you to either one of those, uh, but just let you know that that's going on. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, can we? Loving and holy God, we gather in this place today. And we recognize our deep affection for you. And we thank you, Lord, that you bless our lives and you provide us with, with the understanding that your presence is around us through the Holy Spirit. And today, as we gather around this table, we, we recognize, Lord, that it is a great honor to be with our sisters and brothers and to share in a commonality of what this means. You are our God. You are our Creator, Messiah, Counselor, Guide, and so, so much more. But today, as we worship here in this place, we pray, Holy Lord, that the overwhelming presence of your Spirit will make its, make its presence known. We pray for the sick and the hurting, there are many in our community of faith that will be undergoing tests this week. Some are having surgery. There's anxiety and a little bit of nervousness there, Lord, but we put our whole faith in you and call upon the name of Christ to bring healing, and we give you thanks for that. We pray for those that are grieving today, and grieving on many levels, and Lord, you're our comforter you're the one who can console us and lord lift us up out of our grief and let us experience the powerful love of your son jesus christ oh god we want to be your church 
And we want to be that and do that wherever we are. And so may your guidance come upon us, all of us. We recognize that you've assembled us with different gifts and talents to be the body of Christ. And so bless now those who lead us, leaders in our community, leaders in our commonwealth, in our nation, and around the world. And Lord, let us always seek your face in everything we do. And thank you for the freedom that we have to worship in this place. And so, Lord, thank you now for this hour of worship. Guide us and direct us. And we give you all praise and glory as we now unite our hearts and our voices. And we pray together the prayer that you taught your own disciples, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let me invite you to stand once again and let's get out our faith we sing hymnal. And sing together 2272 Holy Ground and remain standing for the reading of the gospel. now the gospel from the book of Luke in chapter 9 beginning of verse 28. Now about eight days after these sayings Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. And suddenly they saw two men Moses and Elijah talking to him they appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let's make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah not knowing what he had said. And while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered that cloud. And then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things that they had seen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Be seated. Many of you received an email from me earlier this week inviting, inviting all of us to this common table. The commonality of, of it is found in the life of Jesus. And today, just before we begin this season of Lent, we recall Jesus' Galilean ministry coming to a, a, a climax, if you will, in Luke's Gospel at the Transfiguration. What's going on here is Jesus and the three disciples withdrew from the crowds and the other disciples, and they were led up 
a mountainside where they began to pray. Now, as you heard, they've experienced some strange things. And I think it should really stir up the wonder in us. You know, back during Advent, we talked about wonder and wonderful. And that was kind of the theme. Well, it continues on to in, in the season of Lent as well. We think about <clears throat> the wonder of all of this. What do we say about what I've just read to you? We could talk about Jesus' clothes becoming dazzling white. And I wonder, did, how, did that have to do with how <clears throat> clothes had an important sign for many things like uh, in the Old Testament, for instance, where people would rent or tear their clothes, you know, as a sign of, of humility or guilt? Or in the New Testament, clothes were a sign of the Messiah. You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And certainly when uh, John looked into the tomb of Jesus, he saw the linen clothes, and, and because of them, in John 20, verse 8, it says uh, he saw and believed. I'm just wondering, friends, what will it take for all of us to truly believe? We could talk about that cloud. And we remember how God used clouds at various times to give guidance to his people. We complain about a cloudy day. Today is one of those days. And I've heard people go, ah, oh, it's raining again. But for God's people, the cloud gave direction. Do you remember that? In the Bible, in Exodus 13, it says, The Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And the prophets, like Isaiah in chapter 5, verse 6, commanded the clouds not to rain on the unfruitful vineyard. And it was a cloud in Acts 1, verse 9, that took Jesus out of the disciples' sight. But I wonder, what could that mean for us today? We could also talk about those gathered disciples being terrified in that cloud. What were the first words that the angel said to the shepherds before Jesus was born? Do you all remember? Do not be afraid. Remember? And what were the first words the angel said after Jesus rose from the dead? Do not be afraid. Right? And what were the first words Jesus said after he rose from the dead? Do not be afraid. So what were the first words the disciples heard Jesus say when he met with them during his resurrection time, do not be afraid. 2,000 years later, I'm wondering, is that still relevant for us? You know, we call fear by many names. Worry, tension, anxiety. But what do we know about fear? Well, we know it's contagious. We know we can catch it from our neighbor. We know that it's limiting. We know that it's draining. Have you ever been drained of your energy through worrying and anxiety? Anybody? Anybody in here ever done that? Sure. Okay. But you know, the most important thing that we know is that God doesn't want us to be afraid. In Ephesians 3 verse 12, it says, In Christ, we can come before God with freedom and without fear. Isn't that awesome? And so we gather today at this common table. And I'm wondering why are we called not to be afraid? Well, I want to suggest a couple things. You don't have note pages today, so just, just relax and just listen for a moment. I want to suggest, first of all, that we depend on God to guide us when we're confused or afraid. We depend on God to guide us. And this is a really important because part of our fears that we have as a church or as individuals is often based on the fact that we don't know what we're going to do next. Today, as we enter this season of Lent on Ash Wednesday, coming this Wednesday, uh, as, we, as we deal with gaining complete understanding of what took place at General Conference earlier this week, uh, we're at a beginning. And, and we think, well, how am I supposed to act? What am I supposed to do? What will, what will the problems be as we try to move the ministry of this great church forward? And we have a lot of questions. But you know one thing that we can count on 
in the future is that we're going to have to make some decisions. Some of us don't like that. We, we don't like to make decisions because we're afraid we're going to make the wrong decision. And Peter was so excited that he burst forth to Jesus and he said, well, let's build some monuments for what we've seen. If you read the other, uh, the other stories and the other Gospels of their, their um, story of this transfiguration, you'll discover that Jesus wasn't too thrilled with that idea. <laughs> but the whole idea of the future means new challenges. It means new decisions. It means that we might make the wrong one. I mean, friends, it can be confusing. I mean, let's admit that. Let's name that. Life is complex. Sometimes there are no easy solutions. But God says, because of my faithfulness, you can trust me to guide you when you're confused. Now, in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Never rely on what you think you know. Hello? Remember the Lord in everything you do, and He'll show you the right way. My friends, the family, the, the, the issue is this. When you come to decision-making in the future, who's going to be the source of your advice? What's going to be the source of your authority? When you don't know what to do and you're confused about tomorrow, who, who are you going to look to? And the second thing is, when we're afraid at times, or we are afraid at times, because of the unfairness that we see in our world. How many of you watch the news? Well, okay, how many of you will admit that you watch the news? So I know some of you have just turned it off. You, just, you know, I'll just shake my head. I'm, I'm with you. But you hear the news and you think, gosh, that's just not fair. We go to work and we think, well, that's just not fair. We go to school and we think, oh, that's just not fair. We go to church and sometimes we think, that's just not fair. It seems like today unfairness is all around us. Innocent people suffer and dishonest people seem to prosper. It just doesn't seem fair. But I wonder, who said life was fair, you know? This is in heaven, friends. Look around. This is earth. This is an imperfect place. And the earth is marred by sin, yours and mine. There, there will be prejudice. And there will be mistakes. And there will be injustices. We're going to be put down and people are going to take advantage of us and people will cheat us. And there will be unfairness all over. The question is, though, how do we handle it? We can depend. I tell you this, we can depend on God to defend us when we're offended. And I know this is hard to hear. But hear this. We can depend on God to defend us when we're offended. And you know why? I go to Romans 12, verse 19, where Paul said, Never avenge yourself. Leave that to God. For he has said that he will repay those who deserve it. My family, we truly can depend upon God to defend us when we're offended. We may have been hurt by people. We may have been victimized by people. Do you think God didn't see that? God saw that. God has seen every hurt that you and I in our world have ever experienced. And I don't care if it's financial or emotional or spiritual or physical. God sees it all. And God says one day God is going to settle that score. And so we shouldn't waste our time of our future trying to get even. We need to let God do that. The reason I'm saying that, friends, is because we can come to this table today with confidence. Confidence in a God who gives us the power to overcome our fears. It's available. There is a little catch, and that is that that power is not automatic. I mean, I know as many believers who are defeated by their fear of their future as I do unbelievers who are defeated by their fear of the future. It's not an automatic thing. Just because you believe in Jesus Christ, you're going to have His power. We have to do a few things. Let me share, let me share three of them with you. One, real quick. One, we've got to admit we're afraid. 
We have to be willing to say, God, I don't know what's going to happen. I might be one of those people who feels rejected by my family or even rejected by my church. I might lose my job. I might have a major illness. I might be in a car wreck. I don't know. And it scares me. I'm afraid. The second thing we've got to do is ask Christ to infuse us with his power and his strength. Come to Christ's table. Friends, receive this holy meal. And when you're here, when you receive that bread and that cup, just pause. And you say, God, be strong where I am weak. When you're holding that bread in your hand and that cup, say, God, be strong where I am weak. Can you say that with me? God, be strong where I am weak. And the third thing I would mention is step out in faith and do the right thing. Taking it one step at a time, one day at a time. You know, God is not going to give us the energy for next year today. But God will give us energy for tomorrow when we get there. Do you have fear? Ever been afraid? In Romans 8, 28, it says, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. You ever been afraid? Afraid of losing control in your life? You and I cannot do Romans 8, 28. We can't work all things in our life for good. But God can. And my goal in this meditation for today has simply been to take stop, but just to pause and expand the wonder that's within us and to grow our image of God. I want to remind you that our faith is about serving a big God, a big God not a knee-high God, not a head-high God, and not a sky-high God, but the most high God who sees a bigger picture and still is passionate about the desires or the details of your life and mine and desires to turn all of that toward good. Let's pray together. Loving Lord, in life, we need to recognize that you are here and be willing to celebrate and give thanks for your goodness and grace. And so today, as we Share in this holy meal. I pray, Lord, that your presence will be sensed, that we might gather here and pray, God, be strong where I am weak. This is an exciting time, Lord, for us to gather in this place. Help us to understand that. Help us to be overwhelmed by it. And help us to celebrate. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. I want to invite you as we respond to the word to join me for the confession and pardon. It's found on page 8 of your hymnal. While you're looking for that, let me offer this simple invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly Repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Is that you? Then you're invited to this table. But first, let's confess. Let's stand and let's confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We've not loved our neighbors. And we've not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you and you and you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. 
Glory to God. Amen. Turn to your neighbor now and offer a sign of peace and reconciliation. As we continue to respond, our ushers are preparing to come forward. So let's prepare ourselves now to offer our gifts and our tithes to Almighty God. Loving God, as we think of this transfiguration of how Jesus came down changed, we ask that you change us, change our hearts, change our attitudes, change our minds where we need to change, and help us as we give of our time, talents, gifts, service, and witness to you for your glory. In Jesus' name.
The responses to the great thanksgiving are found on page 17 of your hymnal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image. You breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned, when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water in the Spirit. And when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, and he gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant that's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ, Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we now proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ. Christ Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the Holy, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forevermore. As we gather at this table today, I remind you that our faith teaches us that Christ died for all, and there are no exceptions. And so if you're a guest here today, you are more than welcome to join here around this table We'll ask our choir to come first, and the ushers will give you guidance. But as you come today, remember that prayer, and let's seek the Lord together.
Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for your gift to us today, for your giving and our ability to receive this. We amaze at your presence, oh God. And so inspire us, equip us, and strengthen us to be what you need us to be. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's turn back again in our faith. We sing hymn to number 2237 as we stand. And we sing our closing hymn, As a Fire is Meant for Burning. God, we thank you that you use us for your service to share the greatest news of all, that Christ is love. And so may now your peace that passes all understanding abide with us as we go from this place. Let it abide there forever and ever. And we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. God bless all of you. And take a few moments to greet one another before you go. Don't forget our reception in Gallery Hall.